line is a popular method for understanding the individual predictions made by a model. We can use it to answer questions like, why was their loan application rejected? Or why did we accept this candidate for the job? But if we are not careful, Lime can easily give us misleading answers for these questions. Hi, I'm Connor and welcome to ADO. Lime is what's known as a local model agnostic method. It can be used to explain the individual predictions of any black box model. It does this by building simple surrogate models around the black box models predictions for an individual instance. I'm going to give the general steps taken by Lime to get local interpretations, discuss in detail some of the choices related to these steps, including how to weight features and which surrogate model to use. At first, these choices may seem like a good thing, but it leads to the biggest weakness for this model. That is, we can manipulate the method to give us contradictory interpretations. Also, make sure to stick around for next week's video where we'll be applying Lime using Python. If you're interested in this type of content, then make sure to sign up to my newsletter in the description. You'll get free access to an explainable AI course with shifting public sentiment and movements to regulate AI, like the EU AI Act, factors in machine learning like interpretability, safety, fairness, and transparency will become more important in the future. The course gives you the tools to help stay ahead of this trend. Yeah, you can see an example of the output from this package. It comes from a model used to predict the number of rings in an abalone shell. These bars give the line weights. We can see that for this prediction, the shell weight and shuck weight features are the most important. You can also see that they have had the opposite effect on the prediction, but we cannot tell exactly how they have contributed to the prediction. For example, we cannot say that shell weight has decreased the prediction by 1.2 rings. The bars simply give us the relative importance of the features. Let's move on to how the method creates this output. Machine learning models are complex functions. The idea behind Lime is that this complexity falls away if we zoom into the feature space in the area around an instance. The function is much simpler or even linear. This allows us to understand how predictions are made in this area using simple surrogate models. The surrogate model must be intrinsically interpretable, like linear regression or a decision tree allowing us to easily interpret them by looking at parameter weights or the model structure. Now, there's a lot of choice around how we build such a surrogate model. First, let's summarize the steps taken by the Lime algorithm. Step one, we select the instance we want to explain. Step two, we then generate samples by permuting feature values. Step three, we assign a weight to each of the samples based on how far they are from the instance. Step four, we make predictions on these permutations using the original black box model. Step five, we train a surrogate model using the weighted samples and predictions as the target variable. Finally, we interpret the surrogate model. In the output we saw, the line weights are actually the coefficients of a linear surrogate model. This is the interpretation of that model. Okay. So let's go into a bit more detail around the choices for some of these steps. For step two, to create the training set for the surrogate model, we do not permute feature values using the same method as permutation feature importance. That is, we do not randomly shuffle the values of a feature. Instead, for continuous features, we sample from a normal distribution with the same mean and standard deviation of the feature. For categorical features, we randomly select categories based on the proportions observed in the training data. Importantly, this will give us feature values that are similar to those used to train the black box model. It also gives us flexibility over how many samples we create. By default, it is set to 5,000 in the line package. 
The above process will generate samples across the entire feature space, yet we are only interested in how the model behaves around an instance. This is why in step 3 we need to weight the samples based on their distance from that instance. To do this, Lime uses the Gaussian kernel given in this equation. X is the instance being explained and X apostrophe is the sample we want to weight. We take the Euclidean distance of the normalized feature values. For categorical features, the one hot encodings of the features are used to calculate the distance. Theta squared is known as the kernel width. It controls how quickly the weights assigned to the perturbed samples decrease with increasing distance from the instance being explained. By default, the kernel width is set to 0.75 times the square root of the number of features used to train the surrogate model. We can change this value, but it is not clear what value will be best for a given problem. We set the width too small, then only samples very close to the instance will receive significant weights. As a result, we will not capture enough variation in the feature values to understand how they impact the prediction. Too large and the relationships are no longer linear. We do not need to train the surrogate model on all the features used by the black box model. Linear surrogate models in particular can only handle a limited number. We can decide on the number of features used in the explanation and its default is a maximum of 10. If we select a number less than the number of the original features, we will also need to choose a selection algorithm. For example, forward selection. Another choice around continuous features is whether to group them into categories based on their quantiles or deciles. This is known as discretization. We will see when applying the line package that by default, all numerical features will be grouped by their quantiles. This is to make it easier to provide explanations for these features. Finally, we have the choice of what model we use for our surrogate model. The default is ridge regression, but we can use other types of linear regression or even a decision tree. Keep in mind that the model must be inherently interpretable. For linear models, the coefficients for each feature tell us how the feature has contributed to the prediction we want to explain. Initially, all of these choices may seem like a good thing. However, it leads to Lyme's biggest weakness, inconsistent explanations. The flexibility opens us up to a form of p-hacking as we can manipulate the variables until we get the explanation we want. For those without good domain knowledge, it may also be difficult to tell if an explanation is reasonable. Countering this weakness is one of the reasons SHAP has become so popular. SHAP also allows us to understand the contribution of a feature to a prediction and not just its relative importance. If you want to learn more about SHAP, then check out this playlist or see this video for another popular global model agnostic method, PDPs and ice plots. And remember, you can get free access to my explainable AI course with the link in the description.